The stars come out tonight in the Arena Football League Championship. A guy named Cedric Bonner burst onto the Arizona scene this year to throw for 51 touchdowns. And when Bonner gets in trouble, he can look to the heavens and find a star like Hunky Cooper, who can beat you catching the football and returning kickoffs for scores. The Rattlers have defensive stars as well in Calvin Schechnader. He set the tone in last week's semifinal upset at Albany with this interception return for a touchdown. But you talk stars, there are none that shine brighter than Ben Bennett of the Predators. Give him time and he'll cut up any defense. Eight touchdown passes in two playoff games. His star target, Barry Wagner, the league's Iron Man of the Year. Leading receiver, leading rusher, leading tackler. The stars all come together in Orlando, Florida tonight for a Readable 8 on ESPN. Welcome now to Orlando Arena in Central Florida for the Arena Football League Championship game with the or Arizona Rattlers and the Orlando Predators. They call this place the jungle and you can see why. This place is packed with the wildest and craziest football fans in the Arena Football League. The jungle is known as the most difficult place to go on the road and try and steal some kind of victory. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is Doc Walker. This place has been a madhouse the last uh, oh, half hour. But for three years, they've been after one thing and one thing alone, an Arena Football League Championship. And in those three seasons, Orlando may have had the best football team, but they have no championships to show for it. And that's why people here are so down about it. Very Monster Coach doesn't think they had the best talent a year ago. I disagree. And that's really why there's so much pressure on this Predator Club. Here's a fact that will blow your mind. The visiting team has won five of the last seven Arena Bowls. That's why there's some jitters here in the jungle. You know, Arizona came in here one month ago and was intimidated. Cedric Bonner admitted it. He said, I threw three interceptions. I can't force this. I have to know that I have the talent and I have plenty of weapons to work with. Well, there's no phase to be intimidated by this group. They are rough. And when you got a guy like Humphrey Cooper, who was last year's most valuable player, you know why the Rattlers have every reason in the world to be confident that they can win. If there's one guy that I think can emerge big, it's this guy right here, number eight, Calvin Shanksnader. He, in my opinion, the most valuable player on the Rattlers because defensively he's so good. Look at You talk about throwing to guys. Cedric Tillman, 57 catches. Humphrey, 47. Shanksnader, Vaughn, Rogers. These guys have a lot of people to throw to, and that's why I think Bonner will be okay. You know, and I think the Orlando star is really the one of stars. They've got Ben Bennett, the league's best quarterback of all time. Barry Wagner may be the best player ever to play in this game. But Billy Owens, a defensive back wide receiver, still will not play because of that suspension. He won't play in Todd Shell. The Rattlers coordinator is pretty happy. This guy is an exceptional player. 46 receptions, 633 yards, 16 touchdowns. He's on suspension, will not play. It could hurt him. But then again, they've still got Bennett and Barry Wagner. But can Bennett and Wagner do it by themselves? That's the big question because... They were the stars, and they came out, and they were shining in last week's semifinal win against Massachusetts. You can't win it all, in my opinion, without a great quarterback, and Ben Bennett is definitely one. Look at the time. That offensive line is number one reason he's so successful. And then 82, Barry Wagner. Look at the numbers. 259 yards, five touchdowns last week. Barry Wagner, 12 receptions, 147 yards. If they're victorious, it'll be because these two guys play big-time football. That old Dallas Cowboy quarterback Danny White says they will show Bennett and Wagner plenty of different looks defensively tonight. White is in his third year with Arizona. He's gone from three to seven to now ten wins in that time. And the boss of Orlando is 68 years young. Perry Moss, his 57 wins, the most in Arena Football League history. Well, Arizona has won the toss. They have elected to defer to the second half. So Arizona, with one of the very best defenses in the game, will be kicking off. That is Luis Zendejas kicking off the nets, taken by Herky Walls. And Walls is up past the five-yard line to the seven, and then shot down there. And now coming out at quarterback for the Orlando Predators is Ben Bennett. He's now 32 years old. He played his college football at Duke University. He has set all kinds of records in Arena Football League history. 11,889 yards. The offensive specialist will be Herky Walls with him, the speedster from the Texas Longhorns. 
And now up to the line of scrimmage, which is the seven. That is Barry Wagner in motion, going left, right. And Bennett with a quick pass to Walls, a very short gain up near the 10-yard line. Let's check out the Ironman, the guys who go both ways. First of all, for the Orlando Predators, Webby Burnett, Rusty Russell, Jackie Walker. This is the best offensive and defensive lineman in the game. Odom and Shell are very good, and Wagner is the Ironman of the year. For Arizona, Ash, Thomas, and Wise, with Barr and Rogers, the linebackers, and Cedric Tillman will be a cornerback and a wide receiver. Now on second down. Bennett with all kinds of time, but it is tipped away by Schexnader at the last moment. So it'll be third down and seven yards to go for Orlando. Calvin Schexnader, he has played a marvelous second half this year as a defensive player, but Richard Holt will be a defensive specialist. So too will Carlos Brooks. They will lose, though, Larry Jones, who hurt his leg and his back last week in their semifinal upset win over Albany, and what a game it was. Now third and seven. Barr is in the middle. He is now a down lineman, and they will rush four. And this time, Bennett does get a little pressure. He throws it downfield to Wagner, or rather Alex Schell for a first down at the 10-yard line. This is the guy who had to take over for Billy Owens. Well, don't be surprised once again. What this guy is able to do for him, I talked to Ben Bennett before the game. I said, tell me some pluses. He said he's a big target and he can run. One of the reasons he got in the middle is because Barry Wagner. He demands double coverage. So you can see this. See, once again, that offensive line doing a pretty good job. And Bennett kind of sidearms that bad boy right across the middle. There he is, presents the numbers, makes the grab. So Alex Shell, who only played one year of college football, he was a track star at Arkansas State. So he is young to the game, but he has brilliant speed, the fastest player on this team. Bennett looking to Wagner, flips it instead to Shell, who has room, and he muscles his way to the five. Well, the old uh, cliche goes, take what the defense gives you. Right now, they're giving them the short. Terry Moss says, we'll take it. Kind of a feeling out period once again, Steve, because you know Todd Shell is runs a number of different adjustments defensively. That's the one thing about the Rattlers. They do more so than anyone else, and that is make side adjustments on motion. Second down and goal from the five-yard line. Bennett three of four on this opening drive. And there is time down on the field. And as a beach ball came flying. Hey, it's the jungle, man. It's just the jungle. Start, let's go. On the ball. You know, this was the same situation that Albany was in last week, and then they threw a pass, and Calvin Schexnader tipped it, came up with it, and raised 44 yards for a touchdown. Let's see how Bennett wields it. He does not turn it over very often. In the end zone. Touchdown, Alex Sell! He had no touchdowns in the regular season. He now has four in postseason. And the reason why it works, too, one, watch the middle. You see, you see Owens in there coming with a nice block on the offensive line. Shell, what he does on a crossing route, gets to the end line, presents those numbers to the quarterback real nice, and he beats Holt, one of the better quarterbacks in arena football. And the Predators strike quickly with a 6-0 lead, and now George Semitavia comes on for the extra point. He was the Arena Football League's kicker of the year. He has a booming leg, not as accurate as in Dejas, but he hammers this one through. And it is 7-0 Orlando to start this game. 10-51 remaining first quarter. The Predators are in front in Arena Bowl 8. Steve Fiziak, Doc Walker, back at the jungle in Orlando, Florida. You can see that kind of mist, the smoke in the air. They put on a light show and a pyrotechnic vision before the ball game that I thought we were back in. Remember that old movie, Rollerball? Exactly. It was unbelievable here. Or Disney World. They had more fireworks in this building than I saw last night at Disney World. Well, they had to add 1,500 more seats because this game has been sold out all week long, and quite a few fans in Orlando wanted to come. Here comes Hunky Cooper on the bring back. 
He has a 53-yard touchdown to his credit this year, but he'll be out of bounds near the 10-yard line on this return. Cedric Bonner, such a huge story this year. Regular season, 46 touchdowns. In the postseason, he is thrown for five, and he is talking right now with his head coach, Danny White. His job, he says, don't force it, and he's got a capable player of the year in 1993 to go to in Hunky Cooper, who is his other offensive specialist. Bonner out of Cal State Northridge, a super talent. He was a high jumper, volleyball star, basketball star at Cal State Northridge. This is the first time in his life he's had to concentrate on one sport. And Craig Barr is down at the seven-yard line. Derwood Rockmore. He is the defensive specialist for the Orlando Predators. More career interceptions than anyone in league history with 51. On the other side is Bernard Clark, who plays a defensive lineman at sometimes a stand-up linebacker at others. Yeah, Rock's the leader. It means so much for that defense for him to come out and deliver the first blow. And now it's second down and 12 yards to go. Schechnader will go in motion. And they get it to Calvin, and he is cut down immediately. That is Alex Shell who scored the touchdown, and he's got to be tonight's Billy Owens. Owens was the guy we told you about, 16 receiving touchdowns, 18 for the year. Now on a third down and seven, it's time for Cedric Bonner to sharpen his up skills. Let's go. Left flip, next move, raise a 10 on two, on two. Right there. Rattlers need seven on third down. Almost intercepted. There is a flag down in the field of the 15-yard line, but it was batted in the air by big Rusty Russell. All sides on the center. All sides, number 77, Orlando. Buddy Ward, our jump on official it. tonight. But they do have a huge defensive lineman. We're talking 6'4", six, 6'5", six, guys. Yeah, you see 77 right in your screen, and you would think that the nose tackle would have the best view of the football anybody on the field, but sometimes when you're excited and Rusty says he wants this, he told me to play, we're going to win this one. we got to get it done. And I said, big fella, if you want it bad enough, I'm sure you'll make it happen. Hey, I got out of his way. He's now 30 years old. He says, I can't be playing this game much longer. He was a huge star at South Carolina. This is his fourth year in the Arena Football League. Now third down and three. Bonner. He's going to go deep. Wide open is Cedric Hellman. And he will score. All of a sudden, a quiet jungle. Shouldn't be quiet because such a pit bull, Tillman, as we talked about, one of the best Iron Men in the game. See, the pump makes this happen. That little motion by Cedric Bonner, that freezes Barry Wagner. Then he throws a perfect pass for a receiver wide open. You don't want to get things complicated. The rock comes over, he can't stop it, and the Rattlers are on the board. And you said something to me early this morning, Doc. You said, if Arizona can play well in the first quarter, I think they'll be in it in the fourth quarter. It is the key to victory. They must not fall into the trap that most do against the Predators, fall behind by 20 points. Zendejas with a point after touchdown. Someone threw some ice towards Zendejas. But he is not now. He will argue with Buddy Ward. It's a 7-7 ball game here in the first. 7-7 ball game. Rattlers and Predators. 7:54 remaining in the first quarter. Here's that touchdown by Bonner again. Well, here's a couple of things to make it happen. First of all, receiver with a nice little move there that allows it to happen. Second is the quarterback comes by and gives you a nice little pump. That makes it happen, as you see. Back the pump, the move. You catch Wagner in the cookie jar, and there's Pitbull makes the catch, eludes the defender, and scores. It's a basic play in football, but with the excitement in the first quarter, I think it's a great call on a third and short by Danny White. Because you know these guys are pumped up. You're playing in the jungle. The pressure's on the Predators. Well, Luis Zendejas, who just had a discussion with Buddy Ward, the official, about ice being thrown at him on his extra point try. He pushed it through to tie the game at seven, and now pushes it underneath the crossbar to force the Predators to start from their own five-yard line. Tillman on the 33-yard touchdown on a big third-down conversion. And remember last week, Massachusetts got down 27-7 to 
never really recovered. And played well. They feel like they outplayed the Predators for three quarters, but they're at home watching. And see, that's the fallacy in it. You've got to come out and, and at least play even early. This time, Alex Shell comes to the bottom of your screen. He had three catches on their last drive, the last for a touchdown. Bennett goes to Wagner, and Wagner has got an eight-yard gain. Let's take a look at how these teams got here. Orlando had to fight past Fort Worth after going 11-1 and in the regular season. They beat the Cavalry 34-13, and then last week, they beat Massachusetts 51-42 after going up 27-7 after the first quarter. Arizona, 8-4 regular season, then they beat Charlotte upsetting Albany last week 40 to 33 they were eight point underdogs in that game on second and two a wide open Jerry Odom the fullback and Odom is up past the 20 yard line very important that Odom comes out and plays real good football for him his sidekick will not play tonight the old Buckus award winner Gowan, who is out with the bad, uh, bad knee, actually had surgery. Gun, twins left. Avoid the grab. Gun, twins left. High zoom. 370 read. Wing stack and go. Hunter, you ready? Hit and go. Ben Bennett in his seventh year in the Arena Football League. He played for the old Chicago go. Bruisers. And with the Predators, the last three. Gone deep. Wagner's open. First and goal at the eight-yard line. We got a flag on this one, Steve. Boy, the lob pass. They make it happen so well. And we'll probably see a lot of that because of the size of the receiver, Shell and Wagner. Illegal defense. Number 25, Arizona, out of the box. He's flying. First down. And that illegal defense, as Joe we take Rogers. a look at Wagner... So you go a little out and up, see Zeph Lee falls, he falls out of bounds. They run a little stop and go. And you see Rogers coming in. That linebacker cannot exceed a five yard area, an imaginary square box. He cannot exceed that. You do, you get a flag. Go! Hut, hut. They'll run it to Wagner. And he is cut down at the line of scrimmage. Boy, throwing himself in there with Richard Hole. Boy, Tom Gibson. Gibson made that play. Remember that penalty he had where it said the linebacker was out of the box? Oh, we talk about an imaginary area which really goes five yards on each side, and you cannot exceed that by any stretch of the imagination. 25 there goes out here. We see the run play. Gibson comes up and makes a real nice play on that. And sometimes those perimeter guys on the edge, those ends, if they can bottle that deal up, you can be successful. Uh, he can follow a run, but he cannot leave when you're throwing the football. Bennett on second down, throws it to Wagner. He is down at the five oh, and dropped. drops the football. He dropped it. So it'll be third and goal from the eight-yard line, but my goodness, they're giving Bennett a lot of time to find a target. Well, the best way Shale feels like they can rush is through the middle. So you're going to see a lot of the linebackers getting inside. Here you get back Barry Wagner again, kind of just lazying out. you got to get over it. Holt comes up and does a proper deal because you can't afford to let him get in the end zone with the fade route. We well, are tied at seven. Go! Inside five minutes to play first period. Hot, hot. On third down. Bennett trying to shuffle the pass to Wagner as he was stripped by Matt Eller cutting through the middle. Don't forget your ISO pass. Okay. That, oh, that puts Barry Moss didn't like the play call. Ben Bennett is one of those rare quarterbacks in this league who calls his own play. Yeah, he does. I mean, they go with a the theme, but he has to. Well, he has command the of the offense. He really does. And that's just a little unfortunate. They tried to delay pattern to Barry Wagner underneath with a shovel pass. And you got to give Ellers and Tom Gibson. Gibson now three big defensive plays in that series for the Rattlers. You see how narrow those crossbars are. Just nine feet across for some of the 24-yard field goal attempt. He puts it right through, and Orlando has a 10-7 lead with three minutes and 41 seconds to play in the first quarter. We come to you from Orlando, Florida, the site of Arena Bowl 8. Orlando has a 10-7 lead on Arizona, and tomorrow, 
We've got a great college football afternoon for you. 11.30 in the morning, Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James will huddle up for our college football game day. And that'll be followed by Indiana and Cincinnati. The Bearcats enjoyed an excellent 1993 season going 8-3. That was their best record in 17 years. And Indiana is a fine football team as well. Led by their quarterback, John Pacey, who threw for 1,796 yards last year. Oklahoma and Syracuse will follow at 7.30 Eastern. Hunky Cooper with 15 touchdowns this year. He'll have to play this one off the net, and he plays it perfectly. And Orlando plays him perfectly. Well, Cedric Bonner last week made no mistakes. Did not have any interceptions. He threw for two touchdowns. But there's a guy on the other side named Durwood Rockmore who could really cause him problems. He's a veteran defensive back, 33 years of age. And he is a fella who you feel could maybe get into the head of Cedric Bonner tonight. Oh, I think that's his job. He's probably the best defensive specialist in arena football. He's a crafty veteran, as you mentioned. He will try to read Cedric because Cedric had the tendency not to look his defenders off. He's number 29, the back left of your screen. And they're picking up Hunky Cooper. And Hunky makes the catch, and Rockmore and Bernard Clark are there for the stop, but not until Hunky gets an eight-yard gain. Durwood Rockmore, 34 years of age, all-time Arena Football League leader in interceptions. He picked off his 51st last week. He's out of Texas. A and I. There's, there's no retirement in sight, but if I get a ring, maybe I'd like to move into the front office of Arena Football. <laughs> I'm sure Gene Noodle might share a seat with him. Here we go. Gene's the director of operations here in the Arena Football League, based out of Chicago. Tracy Mao in the game now, and he has the first down up past the 15 yard line. There is Todd Shell, the defensive coordinator for the Rattlers emotional leader with the white shirt on and he's he's doing the pacing already oh he is he is you know it may not look like a lot for the rattlers but they have got to establish a ground attack the predators are the best in football versus the run especially inside their own red red area but what you're going to see is that danny white will continue to gnaw it out and todd likes it because he keeps his defense on the sideline allows him to get a break and danny praising his defensive coordinator he feels he He'd be great at any level, Arena Football League, college football, NFL. Here's Bonner scrambling, in trouble, down he goes. A loss of two on the play. Isaac Williams, a big star at Florida State, on the sack. And see, they just collapse the pocket. What you're going to see is this tired defensive line start to get pressure. And they collapse it. You try to allow him to get a cushion in there, as we'll see on the replay. And as you watch, you see they just collapse it. That's too tight a cushion. The quarterback tries to step up, but there's nowhere to go. Here we go. Let's go. Right, X back, block it, 53 on one-on-one. Ready? Hurry up, hurry up. Second and 12. And they'll blow the play dead right here. Now, Orlando put a lot of pressure on Mike Hagel in their football game, but they never did sack him. Tonight, they have sacked Bonner once, and they were able to catch Craig Barr behind the line of scrimmage another time. Arizona, still second down. I will say this in Cedric's defense. As an inexperienced quarterback in a big game, I'm sure Danny White would rather him eat the ball than throw it away. One of the better quarterbacks in the league, and Perez got caught last week throwing the ball away, two interceptions off the nets. So if you watch those films, I say you hold it. They lose three. It is second down and 16. Milton Vaughn with the catch where they mark him. It is near a first down at midfield. And they will mark it in a first down territory. I believe he's got it. Talk about unsung heroes. Milton Vaughn has really come on. The past the hero last week. Oh, man. They were down 32-33 at Albany. And Bonner 
hits Milton Vaughn, and he streaks 36, and they never look back. One thing we talked about was how they spread the ball around. This is a perfect example. Predators leading 10-7. Cooper looping around. They dump it off to their big tight end. And Corey Brannon is down the sidelines, and he gets a first down on the final play of the first half. Great call, baby. Great call. After one quarter of play, it's your At the end of the first quarter, Orlando has the lead. But unlike last week, when they're up on Massachusetts 27-7, it's only 10-7 Predators. Life in the jungle, we're in Orlando, Florida for Arena Bowl 8, and it's the Predators 10, the Rattlers 7. But the enemy, Arizona, has the football at the 13 of Orlando, first down. Schechnader will go to the right, Cooper and Vaughn are to the left, and Craig Barr is the fullback. Bonner had a tip, but Schechnader still made the catch. And he is near a first down. Kind of get the feeling that things are going well for Danny White's club. I mean, how many tip passes do you see that end up in the receiver's hands? Once again, I got to give the offensive line a lot of credit. Odom went on a real nice rush. There, Barnett with the hands up. Jake Snyder continues to concentrate, sucks it in, takes it for pretty good game. And one of the keys. As you see this full house crowd, they put 1,500 more seats. You said one of the keys was Cedric Bonner must play well early to gain confidence. He's got First play year, early. he replaced Paul Justin, who was a real stud in this league last year. Who's with Indianapolis right now. He also showed a lot of poise because he took, took a bad play, took a sack, didn't choke, stayed in, you know, within the framework. So things are good. Well, he'll go over and visit with his head coach, Danny White, as the Predators lead the Rattlers 10-7 with 14-16 left in the half. Steve Fiziak and Doc Walker here at the Jungle. Exciting, spectacular Predators night on ESPN. And Cedric Bonner, well, he has had one special evening. Can't do any better than 6-6, six six, 83 yards in the score. He note to it, he has thrown the five different receivers so far. That's what makes this offense so well under Danny White. Look at this, Hunky Cooper's the running back, and he's sweeping left, and Hunky will get to the one for the first down. The old quarterback from UNLV is now running out of the eye formation. No sense of holding anything back. You got a player like Hunky, you get the ball in his hands. Yeah, let's go Boy, Bernard, what a real shot in this. Now we're watching this. Here you see Cup. Cooper, who is at the tailback spot, and what he's going to do is accelerate right, takes the toss, watch the big guys up front, real nice surge. That is what a back likes. You'd like to see a real nice surge up front, and he took advantage of it. Now do you go to Craig Barr? Fullback number 35, yes, and he has hit at the three, lunges forward, but will still lose a yard. Alex Shell. The guy who Coach Terry Moss said he's the best athlete we have in the football team, but no football sense. Well, we he was knew, a track star. Yeah, well, we knew he'd be good offensively. We didn't know he'd do fake plays like this. See, Rockmore makes the play. He penetrates, forces it, ties things up. The mighty Thor cannot get there. Look at the pursuit. Look at all those black shirts at the point of attack. That's why they're number one in defense. Derwood Rockmore played a little with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now on second and goal, they'll run it back to the right side, and Schechnader is dropped. Doc, in their last meeting, one month ago, Orlando made two critical goal line stands yeah, to bust to open that cute. game. Tough to get real cute down here at goal line. Jackie Walker stays at home as a defensive end. Manhandles Calvin. I mean, that's a physical mismatch. So now it's third and goal at the six and a half. Jackie Walker a year ago was with Miami. Calvin, left, wide, 12. All right. On one, on one. Ready? Better get this thing off. They just did. Jack oh, Stater, what a catch and what a throw. We talk about Cedric being young and inexperienced, but boy, does he have a rifle. See, that's a big-time throw. 
championship competition with everything on the line, you got to have a quarterback step it up. This is exactly what happened. I mean, he throws a rifle. Shanks goes in, puts the paws on it, sucks that ball in for a score. You will find a better play under pressure than what we just witnessed. Third and goal at the six, and it was a BB right to the numbers. Zendejas. And Arizona is in front for the first time in this game. 14 to 10 with 11.25 to go. First half. That Predator is mighty quiet right now as the Rattlers lead 14 to 10. Danny White, head coach of Arizona, said this is the most important game for him personally. You know, I've said it in the past, I don't know that I've ever been in a game that was as important to me personally as a player or a coach as this one because as a player I was one small piece of a giant puzzle as a head coach and a general manager you know you feel a lot more responsibility for the results win or lose of, of a game and uh, last week's game was sweet you know going back up and beating Albany in their place as underdogs but it will pale in comparison to how sweet this will feel when we win this one and that's a man who took the Dallas Cowboys to the playoffs five times he set all kinds of records at Arizona State went to Mesa Westwood High School I mean he has grown up in that area and he absolutely loves it now Schexnader has given his team the lead for the first time in this game Herky Walls oh man he just kind of put it in reverse and sat down that will work against these two clubs they play special teams too well. They get down and everybody understands the importance of this game. You cannot let up, especially on special teams. Ben Bennett back at a quarterback. Gun right, high rip, 500 stack, Z post, don't get ready. Terry Moss saying this has been his most consistent season. He usually has one bad ball game a year and he said, not this season. Go! The only stay, loss stay, they stay. have suffered. Go! He did not play because of the Five knee injury five. suffered to his right knee. Bennett, deep, Wagner. Oh, man, it's Alex Shell again. You talk about makeup speed. We well, had heard he was a track star at Arkansas State, a 24-foot long jumper, and a guy who ran the... 110 meter high hurdles in 13-4, but he's separated from that defensive back like right now. Yeah, it is no way to say this better. Ben here is going to drop back. You see the post route, and this guy just flat accelerates on it. I mean, you watch it, and you know that he can run. You know Zeph knows he can run. Ben Bennett lays it out, and at that point there, you didn't think he'd get it. He stretched those arms out, and as you've watched Jerry Rice, you've done a lot of games with the Niners, you know that's that makeup speed. Hey, who's Billy Owens? <laughs> Billy Owens you know, was one of the better players in this league. He's suspended. Now we see why they didn't rush him back. Alex Shell caught nine passes in the regular season, no touchdowns. In postseason, three games, he has scored now five touchdowns. And that ties an arena bowl record for the longest touchdown. The Orlando Predators are back in front, 17-14 leaders over the Arizona Rattlers, 9.53 to play here in the first half. Let's take a look at the Arena Football League's history. I mean, it has really been special as Denver Dynamite took the Gladiators of Pittsburgh, 45-16 in the initial game in 87, then the drive, won in 88, 89, and 90. And in 1991, Tampa Bay Storm, led by their quarterback, Jay Gruden, beat the drive. In 92, it was the drive over these Orlando Predators. And last year, when Orlando was expected to get in, they were beat by Tampa Bay and upset in the semifinals. And then they beat Detroit for the championship. So the Predators going for their first Arena Football League title. And Sema de Villa will kick off to Hunky Cooper, who stands alone. Back seven yards deep in the end zone. It goes into the nets and through, and it will be Arizona's football at their own five-yard line. Alex Shell, longest touchdown in Arena Football League ball history, 42 yards. He looks awful comfortable in this role, and that's, that's important for a young man that steps in and plays behind a great player in his absence and Billy Owens and has that dual responsibility. That's what makes Arena Football so unique that your better players play both ways. Now it's 17-14. 9.40 and counting first half. Bonner 
Throws it over the head of Darrell Rogers. That's his first incompletion of the game. They just set off. And Danny White, you remember after the Albany game when they lost 39-33, and Danny White came back and he said, we're going to simplify. Four running plays, we're going to run the draw, the pitch, the counter, the dive, and we're going to cut our passing game in half. I thought it was important that he did that for Cedric Bonner. He's a great athlete. You want to reduce it so he can use his athleticism. We saw it on that touchdown throw to Calvin Schechnader. Now eight of nine through the air. Second and ten. Good rush. They underneath it to Barr. And Barr spinning to the ten. Boy, Durwood Rockmore so far has just had a near perfect performance. He has forced plays on the goal line. He started the game off, forcing the run. And it's like he's just zeroing in right now on the mighty Thor, Craig Barr. And he's going to take this on as a personal assignment. Defensive specialist number 29, Durwood Rockmore, who's really playing outstanding football so far. Ben Bennett, he's had a solid night. A couple of touchdown passes, both to Alex Shell. Not bad for a guy coming off surgery a few weeks ago. He played 17 days after having arthroscopic surgery on that right knee. Tillman with the catch and the first down. Well, Cedric was banged up a little bit after last week's game. He had a splendid performance, goes both ways, and we call him the pit bull because this guy has two pit bulls that actually eat at home with his mom at the table, dinner table. They've got a setting for these two animals. He loves them to death. I think that's sick. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> some do they guys get do work. They get a napkin and whole bit. He says they're rather polite, too. <laughs> I'll never go over to his house for dinner. You can believe that. Cedric Tillman out of Northern Colorado played a little bit with the Denver Broncos. And now a real star in this league. From the 21-yard line, first down. Bonner flipping it to Rogers. Danny White says he has the best hands on the team. When you throw him the ball, he will catch it. He doesn't have the speed of a Hunky Cooper or a Cedric Tillman, but he can catch the ball. You know, we talked about choking the offense down, and Cedric has the ability to handle the entire package. But what happens is that Danny White does a lot of things, just like Todd, off, off motion, off side adjustment, option routes. And this just settles it down so the receiver and quarterback are on the same page. And you can implement that short passing game and be very effective. Another game six. <laughs> and there was a poor read that time. I'm not sure if Tillman was supposed to cut out. Instead, he cut in. And Wagner was the closest man to it. If Barry breaks closer to the ball, he's gone. Well, again, what we're trying to get accomplished you know, on the outside is something we would like to think of a slant rod. It does not work out that way. And you have to think that here on the second receiver on the delay, who's not even looking for the football. Now, that is strange. Well, this is a perfect situation for Cedric Bonner. Third down. And he is a perfect four for four tonight on converting third down. He's going for the home run. Incomplete, and Honky Cooper was wide open. I mean, he had separation by six, seven yards. Well, Barry Wagner was playing a deep zone. And what Cedric had to do, he had to throw it right on the line. I don't think he felt as confident about it. And we watch Cooper. Kind of comes down, gives you that little phony acceleration, then he takes off. He's on a crossing rod. What you don't see is Barry Wagner down at the bottom of the screen. It kind of took away a throwing lane so Cedric couldn't put the ball in a lower arc. But now from 39 yards out, the league's most accurate kicker. 11 of 16 is amazing in this league. It is blocked! There is a flag down. There may have been an outside rush, which is illegal in this game. You have to believe that. I mean, Victor Hall is good, but I don't know if anybody's that good. Yes, indeed. Outside rush. In arena football, you cannot rush from the outside. We already talked about the linebacker situation. Yeah, I got me in the back of the head. Hey, you know what? Here we go. Fourth down and three. Danny White, the riverboat gambler. How many times last week against Albany did he cross you up? Now, he may go for it now on fourth down. Oh, he had an onside kick. He had a fake field goal, remember, on fourth and five? Outside rush, number 87, Orlando, five yards, automatic first down. 
the man with the outside rush, Victor Hall, was also the man who blocked it. Well, now we know why. See, mistakes again. We'll keep our little mistake sheet. And you cannot afford to have over five in championship performance and expect to win. You know, Perry's smoking right now. Your defense goes out and plays well. It's best series of the game, and it's negated. Oh, that gives him a first down. Oh, Excuse yeah. me. And somebody was in the neutral zone again, and I think it was a defensive player. I thought it was going to give him a fourth down oh, and about a foot. Instead, it gave him just enough for the first down and continues his drive. It was against the defense. Henry Brown. Encroachment, number 98, Orlando, three yards, first down. Henry Brown played a little bit for the New York Giants and the Los Angeles Rams. This is his Alrighty, third man. year with that. Orlando. You credit this, this series, I guarantee you. If the Rattlers score, this is one that just breaks your back, the Predators, because you should have your offense on the field. Yeah, the time of possession has been dominated by Arizona in this game. 4.34 remaining first half. Bonner in trouble, throwing it away. Flag is down. Clark on a clean run. got to be linebacker in the second neutral zone on this one. Hey, they're shooting themselves in the foot this entire drive. Well, that's three in a row. Encroachment, the second neutral zone, number 33, Orlando, three yards, still first down. And all we talk ben about Bennett the can do is watch. Well, he's like, he, he should be on the field. Hey, you watch it, 32. Here, Clark, there's that imaginary box that we created for you once again. He cannot exceed that. And see, the second backer goes in, and they pull it. You watch the three offensive linemen come up. One will raise his hand. In this case, he was on the right side. Bonner. Catch made by Cooper in traffic to the four-yard line. First and goal. Tell you what, he hung in the pocket a long time. He had predators all around him. Does this look like his first real big football game of his career as a pro? No, no. Nope. F and X train, right trip. This will be interesting. We're going to draw that, draw that defense and hold into the line with that fake pitch. And now a timeout with the call as the clock went down to one second. So Danny White. <laughs> and he was saying, go tell Corey what I told him because he was lined up on the wrong side. 3-11 to go in the first half. Predators by three. If you are afraid of heights, don't look at your television right now. We are coming at you from high atop Orlando Arena in Central Florida. And we've got roller hockey. The championship came coming your way on ESPN at 1230 in the morning tonight. Buffalo Stampeders will compete in the championship game against the Portland Rage, 1230 a.m. Rattlers have used two timeouts already this half. They've got a first and goal from the four. There's the fake pitch. Bonner time. Now a flag down. Well, he had his big tight end wide open. Doc Wise in the end zone, but couldn't loop it to him. I'm not sure if there was an illegality on the offense. Was. It's against the defense. Fifth penalty in this How does drive. this happen? I mean, fifth penalty. I, I, I and think three of them have been offside. I think the safety in this case, Rockmore, may have stuck his nose in just a little early. Offside, Orlando, three yards, first down. Yeah, see, I don't care how good you are, if you give an offense a chance to reload, 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 you eventually will get shot. Up and next trade left, pitch 38 man on 101, ready? Big 
play. They're going to try to run the ball in as we watch. Country Cooper's in the backfield. Hunky gets it. Hunky's in trouble. Oh, he's down at the 10-yard line. He was looking to throw. Would have been the biggest mistake of his life. Take the mistake and reload. How many times do you see a guy in indecision and then he ends up throwing a bad play? See, they just don't get the edge. See, there's Rockmore once again. Every critical play that they've tried to run the football, 29, the Rock has been there. Somebody's going to have to get a helmet on him. So far, no one's been able to block him. Third straight year, he's been all arena league. Right, next loop, hot 12, three right to the tight end on one on one. Second and goal for the seven. Third and goal. Great coverage. Jerry Odom on that one. All he's doing is holding. Right, 56. This is what happens when you can't run the football. See the predators. Stop motion right here, right? Let's go right next back. Stop. Wing and X cross on two, on two, ready? See, they've just lost the ability to run the football because of Rock and company, and now they're forced to throw and the Predators know it. Bonner throws it away, and the Rattlers will have to settle for three. One minute remaining in the first half. The Predators holding to a three-point lead at 17-14. And Zendejas has a chance to tie it up. There's really no reason for Danny White and company to be ashamed. They are going against the very best defense in arena football, and especially when you get in the red area. So if they come out and get three out of it, it just increases their chances of going into halftime. Feeling pretty good about what they've done so far. After completing his first eight passes, he's three of eight since. This from 23 yards out is good, and we are tied at 17. With 56 seconds to go, they're rocking at the jungle in Orlando. That's just in case any uh, B-52s come flying over bombing us. <laughs> call this place the jungle, and it is amazing. They had guys coming out of the ceilings on ropes. Oh, I know it. Bungee jumpers. We've been in some pretty nice arenas. We think of Albany last week. The place was packed. America West has been packed down at the Thunderdome with Tampa Bay. Been packed. Uh, I think we've really seen some outside. Hercules, you know this guy can catch in traffic. What I like about Bennett on that play was he actually looked the receiver off, 
you know, and just follow, went right down the ladder to the third receiver. Let's go, gun, right, high load, 500 sting, change routes, next stop, won't you, ready? 49.8 seconds remaining. Well, you hear the motion to zoom and the stop the inside receiver. They got about six different options on this play. Barry Wagner with the yo-yo. Dell cutting underneath, they're going deep, Barry Wagner! so high I'm not sure Milton Vaughn could find the ball well you see that play it's it just not supposed to be completed we talked about the yo-yo there Barry Wagner in motion and then you see a crossing route what he does is establish the outside shoulder now this is a basketball play now 34 yard reception because he can get up and leap and see Brooks cannot allow him to get that position he's got to play him like basketball and try to front him ISO pass why slow on two ready 41.9 seconds left. Again, the Predators have all three timeouts remaining. It's amazing how he can make those acrobatic catches, always keep one foot in, and make them alive. He does it better than anybody in this game. Play action, and there's struggle on this play. It's broken up by Milton Vaughn, and he almost had an interception. That was ugly. Yeah, Bennett talked about how we practice. Look at Perry. Perry's ripped. This is not the way you design it. Here to leaves Iron Man. See, he's going. That's one of those oops. But at least he comes in and tries to get a, tries to get a block. Coming up at halftime, of course. We'll be going inside both teams' locker rooms. Have the gridiron groove and look at the first half stats. And Bennett right now, 10 of 14, 163 yards and two touchdowns. So on second and goal from the four. Having to loop it, it is almost intercepted and should have been by Carlos Brooks. Boy, Brooks makes up for a bad play. Here we got uh, a little wrangling going on. Here we watch. You see, they had a pump play. Defense got in, played it pretty well, and now this is unbin like. You never see Bennett just throw it up unless he knows Wagner is somewhere in the, in the area. Not Herky. Herky's not a guy with that 6'4 frame. Sweep right. Obviously, ready? Right. Sweep right. Right. Short right, right. right. Notice how we had a lot of mix ups today on both sides offensively. This is big game pressure. going to be Alex Shell, and Alex Shell muscling it to the goal line is the end no down at the one and a half yard line 26.1 seconds remaining apparently Shell stepped out and there was a legal what was the call? Did he step out of the five-yard line? Stepped out of five. It's a good move. You got a guy. Yeah, he's been marked by the official until now. And so Simba de Villa comes on to go for the field goal from 24 yards out. 25 will be this one. And he misses off right side. But it's still alive. That's the beauty of this game. And you see the flags, and that's because the Predators were inside the five-yard line. You have to wait for the ball to come off the nets and either hit the player or hit the ground before you enter that five-yard line. That's called the save-your-neck rule. Because if not, it would be heads rolling down this field like footballs. That's a victory for Todd Shell's defense. A huge one. I mean, it was the Orlando Predators goal line stand that won their game against Arizona here one month ago. Interference with the opportunity catch, violation of the five-yard line, number 34, Orlando. Three yards, first down. You know, it does a couple things. You see Shell, he still looks like he's unhappy, but deep down inside, you better believe he's glad. Takes oh, the crowd. Hey, Look at this smile. Hey, this smile. <laughs> All right, let's see what... All right, we'll see about right in there. Yep. So you got to give him five yards. So now 18.3. Bonner in trouble, rolling left. Throwing it downfield. Shex Nader over his fingertips out of bounds. 
12.2 seconds left. We are tied at 17. Cedric Bonner, after go completing 10 of his first 11 passes, is one for his last six and only seven yards. You see, some coaches would set on this. I'd go for it, and I know Danny White will go for it. Here we go. Let's see what the call is. Let's go left, X back, 12. On two, on two, ready? Hustle up, hustle up. Go, go. So much indecision. It's incredible. Defensive backs playing deep. They get it to Vaughn. He holds on to the ball at midfield. And time is called with 6.5 seconds remaining. Yeah, that's it for them. No more TOs. We talk about some coaches that sit on the ball, not Danny White. Cedric rifles it in. Dangerous pass. There Vaughn stays with the <laughs> He stays the concentration runs right in to his own man. There's Cooper. You know, he should have had it the first time. Well, you hate to see two receivers in the same area. I, I guarantee you something was wrong. Someone ran a route a little shy on that one. I mean, Milton just about done everything you could ask of him. And players like Milton, Milton Vaughn to step up and play big for you. If Zepp Lee is able to come up, Carlos Brooks on the other side, we've seen so much that has happened today in terms of the Predators and Alex Shale. Doc, 6.5 seconds remaining. Do they have time for one more play? No more timeouts. So at this point... I still like going in the end zone. I like going in the end zone with this. They don't have that player like Barry Wagner, but Calvin Shanks made her. I think a three-receiver set, and you run something like, like a flood. Why don't you just throw it off the net? Catch on the field, get out of bounds. Yeah, throw it off the net. Drill. Let's go. Right. Right. X back. 58. X sideline. Go. Yeah. One on one. Ready? You see a corner route, deep out. Well, they're giving them so much room in the secondary, they can get at least another 10 yards. Bonner going out of bounds with 2.8 seconds left. Now we'll bring on Zendejas and the field goal attempt. Boy, that was a relentless rush. Four black shirts on Cedric Bonner. It was almost like it was a scream. Now, this is not what you want to have for your quarterback. You're going to see this. You're going to see all these shirts converge right here at the quarterback, and they're all black shirts on Cedric. I mean, he does not have a chance. Look at this. So you got guys in white shirts down on their knees. You got guys with black shirts hitting your quarterback. That won't work. This will be a 41-yard field goal attempt for Luis and Dejas. He hits it well. It's good! And Arizona will take a three-point lead into the locker room. The Arizona Rattlers, 13-point underdogs, coming into this game against the Orlando Predators, lead 20-17 to 17 at the break. Arena Bowl 8 has been all we had hoped for. Arizona and Predator at the half. Welcome back to Arena Bowl 8 on ESPN. It's the Arizona Rattlers with a 2017 lead on the Orlando Predators. And as we take a look at the first half stats, very even. 12 of 19 through the air for the Rattlers. 10 of 15 for Ben Bennett. Similar passing yardage, but time of possession. Clearly in the favor of the Rattlers, and they'd love to have it that amount of time second half. That is key, and also the amount of penalties. The Predators really hurt themselves in that last drive prior to the field goal. Five penalties. They should have had the football back, and who knows what would have happened. Now the Predators feel that they'll be coming back. We'd like to thank all the folks at Disney World for putting on such a terrific show. They were part of the halftime activities, and that's why it's a little smoky again. We had the pyrotechnic specialist out there and entertaining the fans, so Summit of will try and kick it through the fog over the Golden Gate Bridge and to the return man. You're used to that fog, though. I live out in that beautiful Bay Area. The game that you've done it to stick. There is Hunky Cooper. One of the top return men in this league. He's brought one back this year, a 53-yard touchdown return. But you might remember their game on August 6th. Orlando led only 27-21 at the half, and Orlando 
shut out Arizona in the second half. 19 to nothing to win by 25. Cooper spun around and down he goes at the nine yard line. The all arena team this year Bennett won the quarterback the offensive specialist to Eddie Brown Carlton Johnson Derwood Rockmore were defensive specialists and Semit was the kicker. Paul McGowan the injured star linebacker for Orlando. He was a linebacker Burnett Stewart Lockett Wagner and Lassane were also on that all league team. Here we go to start the second half first and ten from their own nine yard line. Three straight years, he has won the Iron Man of the Year. And they flip it over to Cedric Tillman, and he breaks the tackle and is up near a first down. Not real complicated, but it picks you up about seven yards on first down. And you saw Danny at halftime kind of smile at us and said, you haven't seen anything yet. Better believe this, folks. This guy, you know, we talk about him as a gambler. He said, it's not a gamble if you practice it every day. And you know what's funny? He is as conservative as Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, he really I is. mean, he is amazing. <laughs> but on the football field, it's oh, what the heck? Well, you don't pull spend a little that something out of Tom Landry's hat. You don't spend there. You go. You don't spend that many years with Landry and not have some tricks. Bonner's got four seconds in the 25-second clock. He gets it off with three. Throws deep to Schexnader. And Schexnader can't hold on, but there is a flag down, and it likely will go against Alex Shell. Well, Alex Shell had a phenomenal first half. This time he comes out and clearly was in trouble. I mean, he held all over Calvin. Calvin had that ball hit him right in the bread basket. Shakes his heel. He'll go out kind of wiggling and go deep. Number he comes back and gets it up. Orlando, eight yards, and you're going to see first down. when he closes. See, that's a pretty nice close. you got to find the football. you got to find the football. See, Calvin is probably more suited to be an offensive player. He couldn't see it through he the fog. Through, I couldn't see him on the telly. <laughs> I was looking going, oh, my goodness. 50X option on 101. So it's a first down. Near midfield. Cooper is motioning left, right. They're going deep, Hunky. Incomplete, well over his head. Double coverage from Wagner and Rockmore. Yeah, he's got to be upset with himself on that one. Kevin Thomas at center had a great block on Rusty Russell. Richard Ash, Doc Wise, this offensive line. If they don't give him protection, he doesn't have a chance. They're going up against the very best defensive line in football. There's Scott Skiles. He played for the Orlando Magic. He's moving along. Going to be playing for Baltimore this year. Skiles with the Washington Bullets. Footscreen right to Y on one. He'll take his act to the nation's capital next year. The Bullets can use it. He is a darn good point guard. He was so good throwing that pass over the middle of Shaquille O'Neal. Tillman is smothered at the 23. It'll be third down. Let's see where they mark it. About eight yards to go. Bernard Clark. Well, that's not good news. See Kevin Thomas kind of limping back to the huddle. Boy, Zach Rick did make this trip. Dean Jones. Chris Boss didn't make it. A lot of offensive linemen, for one reason or another, had accidents or problems. And so the Rattlers are a little short up front. So these guys will definitely have to gut it out. Third and eight. Bonner in trouble. Incomplete to Hunky Cooper. Oh, that's a tough call. They're going to say he's down. They are going to say he's down. Jerry Odom with the clamp. Hey, you watch this, you see Odom now. You know Bonner, you don't have to hold up for him. He's a big guy. And it looked like he was clearly in a throwing motion. At that point, you're better off as a quarterback just getting back in the huddle. There, Derwood, Rockmore. Had a fantastic first half. This place is going nuts at the jungle. He didn't need that cue card for we're number one. You can kind of ad lib that line. It's a fan of him. Here's a field goal from 45 yards out. Zendejas long enough. Off right, Herky Walls. Herky Walls at midfield.
Orlando has great field position to start the second half. 20 to 17 leaders on the Predators. Okay, we're going to show you folks why Herky Walls was able to get outside. Now, Barr has a shot at it. He takes the inside angle. What you'd like to have him do is take it more upfield. If he does that, he will not allow Walls to come on the outside. Walls comes outside of the block, and it gives him a free angle. Here, Barry Wagner comes back with a great block, and he's up on your kicker, and that's what you don't want if you're a special teams coach. Plot low. Fake. 360. Quick three left to Z. Wingo. On to ready. And now it is Ben Bennett's turn. Predators down by three. Wagner going right left. Bennett looking long. Instead goes underneath the Herky Walls and he is cut down to the 20-yard line. That was excellent work in the secondary. Barry Wagner went into motion. Steph Lee was able to get a chuck on him at the line of scrimmage. See, I think what you got to do is you got to take Wagner out of Ben's vision early on. Force him to other people. 500. Wing corner Z stay. All two ready. Boy, that's hot. 11 to 16. 169 yards. Two scores. Go! We're at the half. Hot, hot. Wagner again covered by Zeph Lee. They throw it over the head of Alex Shell. Well, I'll tell you what, number six, Zeph Lee. They're putting size on size. Wagner going six foot four and 230 pounds. And you've got Zeph Lee out there who is six feet three, 215 pounds, and a real veteran. And there is number six. They're matching him up against the Iron Man of the Year. Well, they definitely are. The only thing about him is the Southern California Trojan. You see him right there. So he takes on Wagner. Then he hustles over. And they're gambling a little bit, but I'd go with that gamble. I'd go ahead and put that chuck on Barry Wagner, try to get him out of the throwing pattern of Ben Ben. Third and four. Hot, hot, hot. Incomplete flag down. That's rough. Shells halfway out on the field, the defensive coordinator. He thought his man hit him after that pass was in the arms of Alex Shell. Pass interference, number two, Arizona, eight yards, automatic first down. You're playing for a championship. You want to go after everything you can. Watch the right side of your field. There he comes up. Oh, yeah, that's clear. I can see that one from here. Guy in stripes is right on it. We can see that up top despite the smoke. Really gathered a great crew for this Arena Bowl 8. Go! Bennett on first down from the 12 with time. But great coverage from Carlos Brooks on Barry Wagner and Alex Shell. Well, this is the best that they played the Predators in terms of secondary scheme all game long. The problem is they're not getting enough pressure. Stay in that three-step drop out of the shotgun. And they're very patient. That's the thing about Ben Bennett. He will panic. They work out of the shotgun now. With time, now it's eroding, looping it in the end zone. Intercepted Richard Holt. He's past the 10. He's still on his feet, running into his own guys. What a wonderful return by Richard Holt. Just when I say a guy won't panic, throws the ball right to the hands of Richard Holt. And he had some time, but he had a little bit of pressure on him, too. you got to give that defensive line some credit. Matt Ellers was the guy on that one. That was a big-time rush. Rattlers still hold on to their three-point lead. Ben Bennett, not a happy camper, coming off an interception, and we'll show you exactly why it happens. Here we've got Scott Shale here on the outside. He's trying to run the pause passing route. Here you see Bennett, he's trying to get in the cross, and what's going to happen is Richard Holt is going to settle back in this area, and he is going to get the theft. Playing pretty much in a zone, he's got the out-of-bounds line in the end zone as a defender. He works right up on the football, makes the grab, and then turns into an offensive specialist and takes it out and picks up some valuable real estate. He could just get a block. You know at this point these guys are tired. Don't forget, they go both ways. And I think you can tell it a little bit towards the end of that play. 
So Bennett has given the football back to Arizona at 7.36 remaining third quarter, and Cedric Bonner will whip it off to Darrell Rogers for a good gain up past the 25-yard line. Remember last week when Arizona was talking about somehow we got to slow down the Albany attack. They picked off Mike Perez five times. He really, really did it, and Perez was defense, but I think he was definitely a Rolls-Royce quarterback. Two in the nets, he had one tip, and he made a bad decision. He made a Ben Bennett decision on one play. The good ones believe so much in their Let's arm go. that they Let's can make it happen. Sometimes you get caught. On one on one, ready? Get up in there. Second and three. Milton Vaughn, Hunky Cooper wide right. Rogers is the wing left. And he'll catch it again. And they're going to take that until that cornerback comes up to bump him or play him a little closer. Well, he had Milton Vaughn on a deep post from the prior play who was open this time they went to Humphrey Cooper so you just know that sooner or later they're just setting this deal up once again real nice little flat route you notice the defense is there there's Rockmore there's Clark but you move the chains real sound football but you know that Danny White has a wrinkle something up to work a guy open Bonner's had an excellent night He's been steady again, and sometimes spectacular. Does he have a little spectacular in him right now? To Cooper, near the four-yard line. This might be their finest drive of the game. Only thing lacking, they need to run the football. Need to run the football. This time you're going to watch nothing real complicated. Here's Cooper on the outside. He's going to take it down in this area. You're going to watch Cedric get back, get a clear line on a B. Here he comes across. Nice little route. Nothing real complicated. Just a little loop out. But the ball is there. Cedric is, doesn't panic, and he had pretty good offensive line play. And Cooper now has three catches for 24 yards. Rattlers lead by three. Second and one. Tracy Mao. I believe he's got the first down. We'll have to check the mark here. If he gets a good mark from the officials, he should have the first down. Okay, we're also seeing a quarterback really grow up this year. Well, the past four weeks, I mean, they would not be here if he didn't have good games. I mean, we know this league is so quarterback sensitive that it's ridiculous. I mean, you got to have a guy that can get it done. But as I said before, they must run the football or they'll be kicking, they'll be having to kick a field goal. And they need the 10 points against an Orlando Predators offense, which is second best in the league this year, averaging 50 points a game. Bonner having to scramble in trouble. Darrell Rogers over his head. Fourth down and inches. Still a good throw by Cedric. I mean, we saw last week Perez throw that up in the net in a similar situation. Tracy to cut it in tight. Go left. Trips. Pitch, pitch 28 minutes. Listen. Cut it in tight, Tracy. Go, go. Left trips. Pitch 28 minutes. On one on one. Ready? Hustle. I like the one ball. month ago. The Predators had two goal line stands where they stopped Arizona. Will this be another? Tracy Mao. He jams his way to the two and he's got the first down. Boy, what an effort. You know what? If it had not been for the second effort by Tracy Mao, it is first down going the other way for Orlando. You don't make it to the championship game unless you have guys that give that kind of effort on a regular basis. This is an outstanding play. Real nice little toss. The line is there. See, a lot of average back goes down. A guy that wants, a, wants an arena bowl ring keeps it going. See on the backside, those black shirts are there. McGowan, boy, he got sucked in and blocked on that one. Excellent block by Tom Gibson. Tracy Mao out of San Diego State. A linebacker at that school having to play linebacker and running back in the Arena Football League. So here we go. First and goal from the two-yard line. Well, you don't want to have that happen. You don't give up timeouts. Come on in. Come on in. And no one is madder than that man, Cedric Bonner, and his coach, Danny White. They still have a 2017 lead on the Predators and are knocking the goal for another touchdown.
Steve Fiziak and that old Washington Redskin tight end Doc Walker coming to you from Orlando, Florida, side of Arena Bowl 8. It is first and goal for the Arizona Rattlers. They lead by three. Bonner, Vaughn, touchdown! We got a flag on this play. Could have taken, had two receivers open on this one, Steve. This is against the Rats. Danny White may have to carry him off this field. Legal defense, jail linebacker blitz. He declined. That's down. You know what happened? They had three receivers left side, so I think they were thinking run. Here comes Rockmore, 29. Yeah, Rockmore, he's caught in a little too tight. And it won't allow him to do that. Now, Rockmore has made a living. I think Rock is here on your screen. The two linebackers are here. And as you watch him, he kind of sticks it out in the end there. He's been very, very effective against the run on that play. When they threw, they caught him. You know what? you got to credit Danny White. Well, he got it four times. Rockmore stopped four plays on the run, but not the fifth. Tendai Haas has it perfect. And Perry Moss, he does not want to be looking at the south end in another Arena Football League championship game. The Rattlers were 13-point underdogs coming into this game, but they have a 10-point lead with 2.45 remaining in the third quarter. Well, Danny White, he said earlier this week, hey, we are very, very lucky to be here after losing four games in the regular season. And, and the thing that they need to realize is that, you know, there are nine teams out there that would love to be where they are. To have, just to have a shot. You know, I don't care if you're 40-point underdogs. Just to have a shot at, at winning the championship and getting the ring because, you know, records will be ro broken. The money will be spent. The only thing that lasts is a championship. People don't remember great efforts. They remember championships. And he wants to remember this one a long time. I mean, he's got a great staff. We've talked a lot about Todd Shell. Pete Cattell is his assistant head coach, offensive and defensive line coach, and Chad White. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his brother who, I mean, they, these guys have worked really well together. The Colangelo organization is top shelf, and they are real close now to bringing back a championship if they can just play some good defense. And look at this return. Herky Walls after taking it off the net and off the bar. Let's see where they mark this. Will it be into the end zone? I believe so. It'll be five-yard line for the Predators, down by 10 points with 238 with... Let's face it, 17 minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the season. Well, that was the finest drive of the Rattlers' season. I'm sure that Danny will agree with that. Seven plays, 29 yards, and he took five minutes off the clock. But the bottom line to it is that they were persistent. You know, they took some, they took some losses, took close to a sack, but never, ever gave up. This is the Reno Football League Championship game, the eighth annual contest. And the catch made by Barry Wagner up past the 10 yard line. Again, of six, maybe seven yards. Now, Bennett now two for his last seven. But Tracy turned an ankle on that. He just had a pretty big series, a great run. He set up a third down play for him. Let's go, gun right. Let's go, good. This is go, gun right. 500 snap. Tracy now had to hurt him down. He's one of the top linebackers, and you saw him run the football, getting that critical first down, leading that 10-point lead on the Milton Vaughn touchdown. Hunt, hunt. Bennett going deep. Herky Walls. He makes the catch. He will waltz into the end zone for the touchdown. It looks so easy. But that was just great side of set adjustment on the football. Walls down there with the stopping goal, but Richard did not bite on it. He plays it well there. He's in perfect position, but he just doesn't play the football well. Herky goes with it. Here's Bennett. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew I could do it. Man, he sets it up and tosses it to these guys, and they make it happen. 38 yards on the touchdown. Toss and catch. And Simo with the point after touchdown. 
which has closed the Arizona lead to three again. It is 27-24 with 47.3 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Perky Walls, four catches now for 54 yards and the touchdown. Well, you are now, pal. Well, Ben Bennett has thrown for his third touchdown in this game. And he has told us many times this year, I do not want to be remembered as a quarterback that could not win the big championship game. Well, he wants to get the Buffalo off his back. And that is really a, a sentiment that goes throughout the entire area of Orlando. Their owner, you know, Don Disney. I mean, this guy wants to win it all. And they have a veteran ball club. And you just, you think about that. These guys, some of them may not come back if they don't pull it off. Cooper. Honky out to the nine-yard line. So Arizona with a three-point lead and 42.7 seconds remaining. Cedric Bonner, who has been sharp all evening long, throwing for three touchdowns, comes out again. With his club in front by three. You, know, you just wouldn't imagine that this would happen. That the Rattlers would be able to take the methodical trots down the field against this, you know, vaunted defense. Yeah, right foot back to the 54 hook. Why? Post, all right? Let's go on one-on-one. -on -one. Ready? Oh, this may be the final play of the third quarter. Bonner having to scramble, unloads it to Hunky Cooper, and they get a good gain up near the 15-yard line. They're so effective on first down. If you look back, to the key to their success on these drives is that they start off with a good play, and they put Bonner in a real nice situation, second and three, second and four. And we've got 15 more minutes of Arena Bowl 8 here in Orlando, Florida. It's the Rattlers holding on to a three-point lead. Arena Bowl 8 on ESPN. It's the Rattlers 27, the Predators 24, and the quarterback Cedric Bonner has led the way. Here's a guy who's a seven-foot high jumper at Cal State Northridge. He's sitting in his campus apartment saying, hey, you know, I'd like to continue my career. And his buddy says, hey, why don't you go to this tryout camp in Arizona for Arena Football League? And he said, what? I'll join you. He hopped in the car. They went there. He was Paul Justin's backup last year, and this year he has led the Rattlers to the Arena Bowl. And downfield he goes to Hockey Cooper, first down. He has been on target all night long. Well, some guys are just late bloomers. Here this kid was won 14 letters in high school, and here you watch the Hunkster. Now this is last year's most valuable player in arena football. Said he was a little slighted this year, wanted to make some plays, wanted a championship ring. Now he's taking the proper steps to make that a reality. He was a quarterback at UNLV, an option quarterback, turned wide receiver in the Arena Football League. You know, you hate to have this happen. They gave up a timeout early on in the third quarter, and I'm sure Danny White hopes that doesn't come back to haunt him. They'll run it. Hunky Cooper, not much there. Maybe a half yard to the six. Greg Barr was leading the way, the big fullback. Right, X loop, go, and throw go, go right out. flip. Go right flip and go pitch 38 man right here. Yeah, I like it. Keep it on the ground. You know, right Steve is flip. tough to beat anybody three times, and that's the yeah. thing that the Predators right have going against them. 38, wing lead on one, on one. Right. And the Rattlers have never beaten Orlando. They are 0 and 4, and yeah, another the timeout must be called. So that's two now. They have one left, and still 13:28 right, to go. For some reason, I thought you wanted motion. Unbelievable. That's you. That is you for you folks. Steve Fiziak, Doc Walker, and the Predators trying to put a bite in the Rattlers. <laughs> that gentleman is right now. We've got a second down and goal situation for Arizona. One timeout left for Arizona and 13 and a half minutes left in this game. Will it come back to haunt the Rattlers? Bonner in trouble, throwing it away. Jerry Odom. The middle linebacker came blitzing. 
His dad, Gerald, is the coach of Merritt Island High School for 27 years. They won four straight state titles, and Jerry said it was my dad who taught me about this game, and that's why I've continued, and he's going to coach as well. Let's go right, right, 12 wide arrow on 101. Ready? Come on now. Get up in there. Zone. 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 Right. You know, he really had to step it up with Paul McGowan's being out. Bonner's got time. Wagner was fighting the corner with Cedric Tillman, and Tillman's hot. He thought he was held. Oh, that was tough. You can't beg for him. You got to get it doing regulation. This time, Cedric drops back. He wings it out. Pretty good pass protection. And you see Barry's kind of tied up with him. I think the official had to make in his mind, he had to figure out whether the ball was catchable. That ball was kind of high and away. The Bonner now has to hold. A critical stand by Orlando here in the fourth quarter. 11.57 and counting. Zendejas hammers it home and moves the lead to six. Tell you what, they had a... His middle name must be Money because when he kicks it, it is Money in the Bank. The Arizona Rattlers have a 30 to 24 lead. You see the man in the middle, Cedric Bonner. He went up to the lead official, Buddy Ward, and he said, I apologize for my language. And the reason he was apologizing because he went ballistic when he thought his wide receiver was held in the corner of the end zone by Barry Wagner. Well, it was a good call, and this, this young man is no longer a, quote, rookie of big games. He has arrived. He's got 11.49 remaining, but the Predators, one of the top offenses in the league this year, averaging 50 points per game. They've been held to just 24. But 11.49, again, Luis and Dejas has just been hit by, I, I believe, some ice. several times when he's gone for field goal tries. See, they Some should. lunatics have thrown ice they on the field. They do ice at it. You can't allow this to happen. Second time. And you know, ice hurts. Right there. Well, somebody got it. Well, he has complained about it several times. And the officials may have to come to a decision where they have to warn the crowd and say, you will be penalized. Right. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Right. Well, we've if seen this some, continues. We've seen some rough crowds here, especially with Tampa Bay invades. I mean, this is a really tough rivalry. And tonight's attendance is 14,368. The largest crowd to ever witness a Predators game in the jungle. This is their 17th consecutive sellout. Herky Rawls. Jeff Lee nails him at the 12. I like the way Wall sticks it up, though. He sticks it in there, man. This guy, one of the best to ever play in arena football. But he's shy at that ring. And that's the one thing about the Predators. They have all the trophies, all the accolades, but they don't wear championship rings. And that's the one thing that's driven this team throughout the entire offseason. Ben Bennett has thrown for three touchdowns. But he has also brought his team in the fourth quarter back six times in his career. You're on line. When they trailed by six or more points. Play clock was down to two and Bennett just didn't get it off. He's going deep. Shell fell down. No flag. Carlos Brooks this time was step for step with Alex Shell. But it's still scary that they have the ability to make up for lost ground in just one play. And size makes such a difference in this. And here we'll watch it as the play goes out. We'll let it, we'll let it go. Ben Bennett here at the quarterback spot. And we'll watch Shell. And what he'll do is he'll take off here going downfield. And right there, anybody can get a shot at it. But at this point, it's whoever wants it. And that time, Brooks finally came up big. Now on second down. Hard, hard. Go, They've got it to their fullback, Jerry Odom, and he's got what appears to be a first down. Let's see where they mark him down. No, it'll be just a bit shy. Now 
they get and they remark it. And I'll tell you what, Webby Burnett, number 78, was right in the middle. That's saying, no, no, he was down here. And they changed the call. So it's first down for Orlando at their own 23-yard line. Defensive coordinator Todd Shell. They scored so quick in this in this game. We've yet to see him really get a patented predator drive. Alex Shell is off to the right. Ben Bennett's going Alex's way. Incomplete. Woo, Brooks got away with it again. I thought that right arm was draped around the shoulder. Look at Perry. You think Perry didn't want this one? Perry, see, that's when you WWF action out. Well, he's a great competitor. You talk about a man who might be 68 years old, but, hey, 1944, he was a quarterback for Tulsa. Led them to a victory over Georgia Tech. He's got a flag on this one, and this is tough. Once again, Shell is the man in the score. What he's going to try to do is run the crossing route and make his way across the field. Ben just sits back with all time. There you watch it, right there. See, he goes over the outside shoulder, awful close. Again, we get a chance to watch it a second time. Ben's going, what do you mean, man? He's all over. He's killing my guy. He likes the way everybody negotiates with the refs. But again, it's a judgment call, and they don't have replay. Got to make it. Snap decision. So unsportsmanlike conduct. The penalty is eight yards. Second down now and 18. And Bennett asking for quiet, and the Prince of Orlando gets it. Again, great coverage from Seth Lee, but look at Wagner! What a catch! Seth gave up! He's the best. He's the best we've seen. Oh, no, of all time. And once again, no pressure on Ben Bennett. This is like seven on seven in practice. He throws a beautiful football, comes down, and watch all world. He goes up. Makes the catch. Zeph is in nowhere land. He never found the football. Didn't get himself in a good defensive position. It won't work for you. Nothing real complicated. A little out and up. There's a shot. Now right there, he's got to find the ball as a defender. He's completely out of position. Barry Wagner follows it to the detail. And that's why he's the best in the business. Bennett fumbles. But covers up at the 10-yard line. There is a flag down. And Barry Wagner has some choices to make at the completion of this season. He's got invites from three NFL teams to come and play for them. I'm surprised there's only three. Illegal defensive formation, linebacker stack, three yards, first down. <laughs> oh, Todd, boy, they want this win. They want it bad. First it was Perry Moss, now it's Todd Schell. You're talking about a championship ring at stake. Eight minutes to go. And at about the five-minute mark, if the Predators are not in, in the lead, you're going to see these guys tighten up worse than, than the string. I mean, the pressure is starting to mount. Bennett gives it to Wagner. Touchdown! They're not doing the dance, so that tells me that Barry Wagner's groin. He may have re-injured his groin because they have a patented little dance they do after every score. Here, Wagner on the road. Watch that offensive line. See Burnett. You see Odom. Those guys are digging. See, there's a shot. You got to make that tackle. You got to make that tackle when you get in that situation. It doesn't happen too often, but you got to grab him. Brooks there, pretty good effort, but not good enough. Semenovia has it home. The Orlando Predators have the lead for the first time since early in the first half. It's 31-30, 6.55 to go. Steve Fiziak and Doc Walker back at the jungle for Arena Bowl 8. Orlando is here. They're trying for their first championship, their 17th straight sellout, and Barry Wagner is trying to, trying to give it to them. He had 38 touchdowns in the regular season. He now has six in postseason in three playoff games. So now it's 44 for the year. Eddie Brown 
with 48 regular season, 56 overall. And there is Barry Wagner. He not only plays defensive back wide receiver, he's also a star on special teams. I think sooner or later they're going to have to revamp these awards, have a most valuable offensive specialist and a defensive specialist, because the MVP, in my mind, is your best two-way player, and that is Barry Wagner. You know, he's been unbelievable. Leads the team in tackles, leads the team in rushing, leads the team in receiving. He has over 100 catches now on the year. And Cedric Bonner, it is her, his turn to now bring Danny White's team back. But will we be talking about those two critical timeouts that were called earlier in this half? Excellent point. You know, at this point, it'll be disappointing, but there's really no loser in this game. This has been fantastic. Predators are 4-0 and oh against Arizona, winning in 1992, winning in 1993, and twice so far this year, Danny White said it is so hard to beat a team three times, and that's why he was saying, we're going for the upset tonight. Bonner to Cooper, and Hunky is brought down at the 12-yard line. Good presence of mind, too, to, to get it out of bounds, try to conserve as much time as possible as, as these things start to get on and you just be ready for that final minute because if you start catching those outs not getting out of bounds when the clock stops in that final minute you'll be in the mindset of it and it will be automatic for you second down and four Who's got it? Rock for! His 10th interception this year, his second in the playoffs, Derwin Rockford, the defensive specialist of the year in the Arena Football League. And that's why I agree with you. It should be a defensive specialist of the year. This is fantastic. This was any guy's ball. The Rock Man wanted it more. That man is 34 years young. Durwood Rockmore. Seventh year in the Arena Football League. Two with Chicago, one with Albany, four with Orlando. He wants a ring. Man wants and a So does that man. You better believe it. They are the true veterans in this league. Ben Bennett, the quarterback of the year on the All-League team. They'll run left, and this is Billy Stewart. Short gain up past the 10-yard line. Now, this is where you hope that that big offensive line can just kick in and start making things happen for you. Isaac Williams, Hall, Brown. You know, they haven't played that much on the offensive side. They've been going both ways playing defense, but they can really let some air out of the ball now. Five minutes remaining. Hits and go. On two, ready? Well, you know, Bennett, he just wants that well, clock to be spinning as fast as possible. They're going for the juggler now. They're going to run a hitch and go. go. Hunt, hunt. Oh, golly. Well, he hitched, but he never went. Yeah, he did. They hit Husky right, 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 up, right up the bat. And you see Ben is leading at this point. In most cases, if you got to hit your goal on the outside, unless it's a read, if that guy presses you, you got to get it, you got to turn his shoulders, take him out of it, and the guy coming underneath on a swing becomes open. Well, listen, the wide receiver's read, he's pitching he's go. Soft coverage. Well, he, he really shouldn't. He should fly off the ball, hitch, and go. But All apparently, right. didn't happen. Third and six. Adler's defense has been hot, terrific hot, throughout. Hot. Can they do it one more time? Flag. Goes down, and I think the 25-second clock ran out. So instead of third down and six, it'll be third down and nine. Delay a game. Orlando, three yards. Third down. Yeah. Here we go. Let's just go. Let's go. Twins left. High rip. 500 star. On 
down to. Ready? Got to get first down. They need nine for that first down. Notice how Perry Moss is involved in calling the plays now. <laughs> Wagner couldn't hold on. Great defensive play by Richard Holt. Yeah, Holt deserved one. I also think that Wagner is playing injured. Remember, after his last touchdown, they did not have that patented little dance. And as you see now, he's limping. Heard a groin a couple of weeks ago. You watch him there. See, he does not have his explosion. Very difficult route to run inside slant and try to bend it out on the square. I see he's in pain. And, and he will play through anything because the last two years that he has been in the playoffs, he's been hurt early in the playoff and was not able to compete. Yeah, first quarter against Tampa Bay last year. Predators still got close, but lost off the nets. Semedevia with a long kick of 54 yards. It'll be off the nets. Hunky Cooper in trouble. And he's trying to scramble around. And he is killed at the goal line. Boy, Rusty Russell, 310 pounds now covering kicks. You think that guy doesn't want a championship ring? Oh, is he going to get a bad spot? Are they going to put it at the one-yard line? I think so. Rattlers down by one. They have 49 yards to go. But did Hunky Cooper get a good spot here on this return? Well, I think so. He tried to get out. First of all... It's a pressure situation just to get your hands on that football. Here he tries to take it out. And I think he does. Goes down. The knee kind of hits on the line. So it's close. But there is nothing you can do about it at this point. You just got to play ball. So it's Cedric Bonner's turn. He has been sharp tonight. He's got a great field goal kicker in Luis and Dejas, but this would be a bit much for him. They throw it to Cooper, and Hunky's past the five and muscles his way out to the eight and a half. But that's a gutsy move. Hunky's now has seven catches for 75 yards. But you know, that's what they do best, the short, quick pass. The running game, you don't, I don't think so. They would not have been able to pick up any yardage. So you go to your man, Cooper. You know, he wants the football. Last year's MVP, trying to make a play. Rockmore took one for him in the prior series. You better believe he wants to come back with a vengeance. Let's go, fellas. We need protection. Left, X back, 54 hook, wide post on 101. Second down and two. That's the time remaining in this game. It's a great play to go deep. They're playing them deep. And Bonner hearing the whistles. And Boy, it was for a delay of game. Now instead of second and uh, two, they're looking at second and five. They have one timeout left, and I'm sure Danny White is reminding him, don't call it until I tell you to. They called too early. Orlando still has three left. A predator defense would be smoking. Rusty Russell, guys coming strong. Predators intercepted five passes last week against, or two weeks against Fort Worth. Bonner looking deep, going deep, throwing incomplete. That was smart because Wagner was all over Milton Vaughn, and he had nobody to throw to. Well, it's tough when the quarterback scrambles. You know, the coaches work on this, and I'm sure the Rattlers do it a lot. you got to have one receiver come back to the football. One guy breaks free, but you got to have somebody to come back and help you. And that didn't happen. We are at the one-minute warning. From now on, it goes back to the traditional rules football. An incomplete pass. There will be a time. The clock will stop. That's why I commented before that I thought it was a good practice for the receivers to get out of bounds just so you, in your mind you keep those mechanics alive. Let's go left, wide back, 10 on first down, first down. Okay. Predators have all three timeouts left. It is third down and five. Cooper! First down at the 18-yard line, and that will give Zendejas a little more room to work with as we have 55.4 seconds to play. Boy, Rockmore held on. 
guy right now realizes he possibly made a mistake on that last series. He wants the ball now. He wants to carry the Rattlers to victory. That's a nice throw and catch, and here's a determined player. Nobody gave the Rattlers a chance but the Rattlers, and they are fighting in this game to the nil. Orlando takes timeout. That is the first of the half. It comes with 48.6 seconds remaining in Arena Bowl 8. And there is the head coach, Perry Moss, circling his predators around him. Cooper with eight coaches now, and Cedric Bonner is off on the other sideline with Coach Danny White. football game on ESPN, hoping his son can bring him a championship. And this man, who's been in pressure situations before this year, you remember he beat Massachusetts with five seconds left on a 51-yard field goal. 48.6 seconds left, Predators by one. They're running to Barr. And Barr gets it to the 20. Orlando takes timeout. Did you hear him yell, take it outside. You know, you don't want to turn that bad boy in. You want to get no, your rear end as far outside as possible. I think they'll run that little slot play to Honky Cooper again. I want to see it come into the form of a stop and go. You know, you fake the little pop and you let it go. <laughs> You're thinking like Danny White. I hope not. No cowboy. Oh, he, he wants the deep one. Here's our timeout. Well, 54 hook. I'll hit Hunky inside. Let's go. Negotiating going on between quarterback and coach. They have been together throughout. Ten wins this year. And the Predators try to hold them back. 44 seconds left. Second and nine. Orlando on defense with a one-point lead. Milton Vaughn. Vaughn getting out of bounds. At midfield. What is he doing horsing around, man? You want to stick that ball up, try to get the first down and get out of bounds. Well, they are now three yards shy of a first down. Ten wing post. What is it? Ten wing post. Have you got the ten? You know, this is exactly where Danny White wanted to be. Couldn't be better for him. Shot clock. Game clock's running down. They just to get it off. Bonner looking with time, with time. End zone, 60 -0. And Cedric Bonner was slammed into the boards on that touchdown throw. What a courageous scramble. What a gutsy throw, and he found his man. And the Rattlers have a five-point lead at 36-31. You see the pressure. They're rushing four. 
Shake Schneider bounces open in the end zone. A former star at Washington State hooks up with a touchdown in Arizona. is 31.6 seconds away from winning their first Arena Bowl championship and shocking the Orlando Predators again. Orlando came in a 13-point favorite in this game. And, of course, they will go for the two-point play to try and get that seven-point lead back. That way, if Orlando scores, they must go for two to win the game. They'll settle the tie and go overtime. There's a delay. Game on the play, so a three-yard penalty will put it back to the five. Danny White, except because I'm not sure if they got the uh, communications correct. As you can see, Calvin Schexnader, he had the big interception last week in a 44-yard touchdown return against Albany to set the stage in that victory. And here tonight, he may be the hero. Boy, he's got the guts of a burglar. What a coaching job tonight. delay of game. Check Snader, I think, lined up at the wrong side. He was supposed to be right. Instead, he lined up slot left. Arizona, three yards. They might be wanting more room to throw. And we talked about this many times. Inside the five-yard line, sometimes it's more difficult to score than outside because you only have eight yards and then ends on to work with, and then you're running the walls. Ben Bennett. He's got 31.6 seconds left to bring this team back, but hey, he has brought his team back from greater deficits than this. He takes time out. Another delay of game penalty. And then Bonner called the timeout. You know, Danny White, he keeps on asking and keeps on asking for more. And I'm not sure if he wants to get that cornerback to bite and then run the fade or run that little slot play to Hunky Cooper to give him a little more room to work. But now Dejas comes on and they will go for the one point extra point. Now that surprises me with one point just uh, gives you the six point lead and a touchdown extra point beats you. The Dejas will go for the drop kick. So here we go. A drop kick counts two. And here it is. Now he is putting it down, up, and off to the right side. No good. Still the Rattlers have a 36-31 lead with 31.6 seconds remaining. Sports Center is coming your way next, but you want to miss the last seconds of this one before Gary Miller and Carl Ravitch tell you what's going on around a college football preview, the latest in the Major League Baseball strike. We pray they're close to an end. A huge upset at the U.S. Open, so stay with us. Gary and Carl will be bringing you all the answers following the Arena Football League Championship game. Terry Moss, in his fourth year as a head coach and general manager of Orlando, no one's won more games in Arena Football League history than that man with 57. Won the Arena Bowl for the Detroit Drive in 1990. He's got a great quarterback who can bring him back. And he is a terrific return man. Herky Walls is returning this kick by Luis and Dejas. And Herky has returned five in his career for touchdowns. Hercules Walls was an All-American kickoff returner for Texas Tech some years ago. And Dejas several times tonight has been hit or thrown out with ice. And he hammers this one high and Walls will be able to return it off the iron. Fumbling the football! Look at this! They'll have it at the one-yard line. So the Predators, to win, must go 49 yards. And an excellent kick by Zendejas. And now it's Ben Bennett's turn. 
We told you about his comebacks. Six times in the fourth quarter, he has led his team to victories. The best was when he beat Detroit 50 to 49. They were down by three with 21 seconds left, so he still has plenty of time. He's got two huge receivers in 6'4", Alex Schell, and 6'3", Barry Wagner, and they will be covered by two smallish defensive backs in Carlos Brooks, and he goes six feet tall, and Richard Holt is 6'1". But several times on that lob pass, Wagner and Schell have made circus catches. Bennett, flag down. It's broken up at the five-yard line. Doc, you're down on the sideline. Let's go. What do you see? Steve, I'll tell you, this is an outstanding view. That time we had double coverage. You had Brooks and Holt and Vaughn all converge on Shell. Don't forget, Barry Wagner's injury. I think it's an obvious factor now. He's the go-to guy, but I don't think he plays a big part in this offense, and that spells trouble for the Predators. And they will take the penalty instead of making it second and ten. They want second and eleven, but they want them, you know, with no room to throw in. Only an eight-yard end zone. intercepted. Richard Ash, big number 69, it hit him in the shoulder pads after it was knocked down by that man, Matt Eller. Got some kind of emotion down on that sideline as uh, the jungle really quiet now. Second down. Arena ball eight. With the underdog Rattlers, a five-point lead. He's got Wagner wide open. Can't hold on to the 15-yard line. That would have been a first down. And if Bennett just puts a little walk to it, Wagner had no one within seven yards of him. That's my point, Fizz. Uh, Barry Wagner, obviously not 100%. They're trying to get him in on a crossing route. I think Herky Walls has got to be the guy to come through, look for a pump and go, or look for him to catch a ball maybe on a screen and let him run downfield. 16.9 seconds remaining on third and 11. Wagner has it first down out of bounds, and boy, he is moving so gingerly, you can tell and see the pain from here. Danny White, 12.7 seconds away from an unbelievable upset. Let's go, gun, left, high zoom, 500 stack, next post, don't you, ready? This is a good time for him to put a guy right on Barry Wagner's nose and bump him at the line of scrimmage. Richard Holt playing off Barry. And he just comes off so slowly. And it's tipped away. Schexnader may have been out of the box. He, he was the Jill linebacker. The yeah. Yes, he was, Steve. That's an excellent call. There's no need for it because Barry Wagner can't hurt you deep now. So you close the cushion on him and force him to do what he doesn't want to do going deep. Still line back out of the box. Five yards. Automatic first down. First down, but just nine seconds to work with. Six foot four inch Alex Shell off to the left side. He'll be covered by Carlos Brooks. Man in motion to the line is Herky Walls. Bennett. Wagner. Broken up by Richard Holt. 3.3 seconds before Arizona can claim a championship. So one more time in the end zone. He's done it so many times, going to his go-to guy, number 82, Barry Wagner. 
See, Wagner's not the same athlete he was three quarters ago. So you take a risk now, this ball being picked off. you got to look at 22, Herky Walls, get the ball to somebody else with the exception of Barry Wagner. Not a good play. <laughs> That's his brother right behind him. He is the assistant coach, Chad White, on his Rattlers football team. Final play. Hut, hut. Bennett just launching it in the air. Who's got it? Incomplete. Arizona wins. It. Jail had it and he lost it. Richard Holt, magnificent play. Jungle is absolutely shocked. Carlos Brooks with the great breakup in the end zone. And the Rattlers are celebrating on the field. Talk to me, what does this feel like, Carlos? This is the ultimate moment for you. You went up against all odds going against this tough predator offense, but you made it happen. It's great. It's a great feeling. Hey, they beat us a couple of times, but we strong. We came back. We fight hard. This is what happens when you just keep fighting and fighting. You usually win, and that's what happened. It's a great feeling. The defense pulled it off. Steve is out back upstairs to you. And I am telling you what, the Predators have never lost to Arizona. Four straight victories, and here is the final play. Ben Bennett just launching the Hail Mary, hoping the prayer would be answered. But there came number two, Carlos Brooks, and Richard Holt, number one, taking it away from Alex Shell, an incomplete pass, and Danny White will head back to his hometown where he grew up at Westwood High School in Mesa, Arizona, went to Arizona State, and now a champion as the coach of the Arizona Rattlers. A stunning upset here in the Arena Football League. Eighth game. Doc Wise, the man, real name D'Artagnan, and tears streaming down <laughs> Danny White's face. Danny, Let's go to Doc a lot of emotion for you. You called us when you said it was a goal. If there's some guys, they have to visualize their goals and they turn them into reality. How proud are you of this football team? Well, uh, yeah. I can't put it into words, but the best thing about it, Doc, is that we did it with a good bunch of guys. You know, we're not a jerk on the team. Every one of them is a great guy, and that's that's the icing on the cake. You've been in so many big games yourself in your career. Cedric Bonner had to stand up and play strong. You know, what was it like when he gave up those two timeouts in the in the third quarter? You really looked ripped. He was being cautious. You know, we knew we just had to execute. We had to know what we were doing. And, uh, you know, it ended up probably being a smart thing to do because we didn't want to make a mistake at that stage. We wanted to talk about it. We wanted to know what we were doing. But uh, From quarterback to quarterback, you know you yeah. won't hear a bad word. All right, we'll go back up to Steve Fiziak. And there it is, the Arena Bowl trophy. And the man who broke up the final pass play, number two in the middle of your screen, Carlos Brooks. But it was Danny White who gambled last week. And despite being an eight-point underdog to the Albany Firebirds, they won that game. And here tonight, a 13-point underdog to the Orlando Predators. But he's the gentleman. If he played blackjack and he had a 19, he'd say hit me. Let's go down to Doc Walker again. Thank you, Steve. This is the ultimate moment in sports when you get a chance to pass out the championship trophy. To do that, the Arena League Commissioner, Jim Drucker. And Jim, you talked about a finale, pal, and this couldn't be any better than this. It's only fitting that the greatest game of the year and the greatest new sport in America comes down to the last play. Brian Colangelo. Brian, 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 come on in. We got Brian and Jerry here. Come on in, guys. Jerry Colangelo, Scott Brubaker, and a excited Danny White on behalf of the Arena Football League and the greatest new sport in America. Here is the Arena Bowl 8 trophy. Congratulations. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Go ahead, Brian. On behalf of uh, Phoenix, the state of Arizona, all the players and coaches and our great fans back in Phoenix, uh, just really appreciate all the effort. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, you deserve it. You're a class group. And so you have it here on the floor. Jim Drucker in his first year pulls off the ultimate presentation. Back upstairs to Steve Fiziak. A marvelous show in Arena.
Arena Bowl 8, Cedric Bonner with a superb football game, leading his team to a 36-31 victory over the Orlando Predators with four touchdown passes. Final score again, Arizona 36, Orlando 31. Tonight's Arena Football game has been produced by High Bar Productions in association with ESPN. Coming up next, the Golden Fork and Field, Steve Fiziak, and Doc Walker. Good night, everybody.